Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone on the rule world. Shalom. And Shalom to the uh, elect teaching this word in sincerity and in truth. Um, in a sincere hope that we may edify and feed the the flock and the lambs of Yahweh Shai, which the word edify means to build. And um, speaking of edifying, I wanted to go into this video, Lord willing, this be edifying. And again, I'd like to say, Tawadi Ha'abashim Yahweh Shai for giving me the inspiration to do this lesson. And, um, you know, it's just going to be a quick one going into um, a couple of scriptures, you know, dealing with, you know, us bringing forth fruit. All right. When the scriptures speak about fruit, when the scriptures speak about fruit, where's that fruit talking about? That fruit is talking about what? You know, in this instance, I'm going to go into is talking about your works. All right. And I'm going to have Lord willing. I'm going to go through a couple of examples, a couple of different precepts proving that very point. All right. Because, uh, you know, we've been given a commandment. The Lord said, look, we are to occupy till he comes, man. You know, and that word occupy in the Greek um, is pragmatomai, which means to be maintained, you know, and busy with the Lord's business, basically. Okay, to be occupied in the business of the Lord. All right, that's why Yahweh Shai told the disciples, you know, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. So this is a work that we're involved in. This is a labor of love. All right, so these works, we got to be bearing that fruit. All right. Um, so this is Matthew chapter 7, verse 15, right? It says, but beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing. So how do you know who the false prophets are? Okay, that coming to you in sheep's clothing That are telling you what you want to hear But really not what you need to hear Which what we need to hear are the words Of wisdom through understanding Being broken down That's going to make us wise to receive salvation Which starts with the name of the Heavenly Father And His Son's name which is Yahweh Shai Alright, if someone's telling you Most High in Christ bless And they ain't giving you the names Then how will you be saved? Alright, and that's a, there's a point That I wanted to get on that as well This is Proverbs 18 and 10 it says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. So the name is important. Okay. The name of the Lord being a strong tower. The righteous that runneth into it and is safe. Okay. And that's how we, you know, abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Through this word. All right. So beware of these false prophets that ain't teaching you the name. They ain't trying to put respect on the names of the Lord. In fact, the very same reason why the Lord is going to do what he's going to do. Is to magnify his name Just like he did during the time When he destroyed the Egyptians His name was magnified Okay And you can get that in um, Romans 9 chapter Alright when, when the Lord said um, When the scriptures say um, uh, Romans 9 and 17 This is for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh Just to prove the point Of what the Lord did to those Egyptians Alright was to magnify his name It says even for this same purpose Have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. And you know, the Lord is about to do that again, all right? And that's why, man, and that's especially why we're supposed to be, you know, bearing, you know, bearing the works, you know, and doing what we're supposed to be doing. You know, so like you bear with me. Okay. Because, um, you know, we're, we're magnifying the name of the Lord. We're putting respect on the names of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai by doing this work, by declaring the works of the Lord. All right. And when it cometh to pass, then shall they know that a prophet had been among them that was pushing out what? The names of the Heavenly Father through his son, which is Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh being the name of the Father and Yahweh Shai being the name of the only begotten son. All right. So let's go back to Matthew 7 and 15. It says, but beware of false prophets. Which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are revenant wolves. Okay, so yeah, they come to you in sheep's clothing. They they seem harmless, but really inside, what are their intentions? All right, and the scriptures speak about if the blind lead if the blind, then they shall both fall into the ditch. Okay, do they really care for the flock, or are they just hirelings? Do they really care about you know pushing out this word and warning you know the elect, you know feeding the flock? Do they really care about feeding the sheep and the lambs of Yahweh Shai? Okay, or are they just acting? Okay, are they just playing the part? But really, inwardly, their 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 intentions are, are screwed up. Their intentions are to, you know, uh, 
for filthy lucre's sake, to make money from the truth, to make merchandise out of the truth. All right. Um, and that's just one example. All right. Teaching for filthy lucre's sake, or is it to glorify themselves? All right. To heap disciples unto themselves. Okay. To be, uh, uh, um, I don't know, to be exalted in the eyes of men. All right. It says, ye shall know them by their fruits. It says, do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? It says, even so, every good tree, sorry, Salakia, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. Yeah, I said it right. Right? So, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. And you know, the scripture said that in the last days that, you know, men were going to, some were going to depart from the faith, you know? Um, is the scripture goes on to say that they're going to be men that depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, man. All right, and that's a part of that evil fruit. Okay, and that's on them because at the end of the day, the scripture says, "Um, what then Israel have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded." See, the Lord is going to uh, uh, feed the flock and the lambs of Yahweh Shai. If you're not, if you're none of Yahweh Shai's flock, man. Then you know you're not you're not going to be fed this this you know this uh, uh this this goodness this uh, you're not going to be nourished with the, um, the 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 word okay the word is likened unto food the like the word is likened unto milk in certain scriptures when the uh, the the word is likened unto water all right this water this hydrates us man okay wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed therefore. Therewith according to thy word. So this word is likened unto a cleansing agent. Alright. Water. It's also likened unto fire. Which is another cleansing agent. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah 5 and 14 goes into that. The word is a, is, a, is a fire. And these people would. And it shall devour them. Okay. But it says. This is but a corrupt tree. Bringing forth evil fruit. Alright. Now I want to go into this word fruit. Let me see if it brings out the definition in this one it should do and the greek word is karpos all right it says the fruit the fruit of the trees vines okay um of the fields this is the fruit of one's loins i.e his progeny his posterity all right that which originates or comes from something and affect a result a work an act or a deed Okay, the works, the acts, and the deeds. And that's how you should know who are of Yahweh Shai by the, what they're doing, man. What you see what they're doing. All right, and it's not just enough just to be watching a man because he seems like he's a man of the Lord. Because the scripture just said, look, you know, outwardly they, they're a sheep, but inwardly they're ravening wolves, man. So you're going to get actors that are going to come into this truth and feign themselves to be just men and so on and so forth. But inwardly, man, their intentions are flawed. Okay. And that's why we have to move through the spirit, through discernment, man, to know, you know, um, um, who's really uh, pushing the vibration, the righteous vibration, who's really, you know, um, teaching the same things that the apostles are teaching on down. OK, who's not changing up the doctrine? Who's not pushing confusion? You know, who's not being double minded? Who's not given given to much change? You know, the scriptures speak about mid or not with them that are given to change. All right, because there are some people out there that, you know, they'll, one minute they'll teach that Jacob's trouble, you know, uh, ain't spoken about or ain't in the scriptures. And then all of a sudden, yeah, it is in the scriptures. So which one is it? You know, and that's confusion. And, and the most I said he's not an author of confusion. OK, it says, even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth corrupt fruit. And we see it with these leaders of these other groups, man. You see how corrupt some of these organizations are you know like whether it be going to the to a to a, uh, a strip club on the on the passover or whether it be having a fashion party right on the night of the passover or whatever they got you know they're being adorned by women they're like acting like they're the most high or acting like they're they your how shy being uplifted being exalted before men you know having award ceremonies you know these are not you know, these are not good fruits, man. These are these are evil, these are evil fruits, man. Okay. It says a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, and neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Okay. 
It says, every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And that's why ultimately, you know, the, the spirit gets on the apostles from time to time. So the Mosai is going to break up all of these, these groups that are pushing these wayward doctrines, man. He's going to really destroy them. He's going to destroy these groups, break them up. And the sincere ones that are a part of these groups, you know, they're going to, hey, Lord willing, hey, they're sincere. They're, they're of the elect, you know, and they're going to be saved in these last days. Okay, because you got some people that are sincerely, they're sincere, but they're sincerely wrong following after who they're following after. All right? And for some people out there, it's just going to take, you know, certain leaders of these organizations to, to receive a certain form of judgment or whatever. However it goes forth in order to shake them up and to wake them up to, to the fact that, look, man, that the Most High is really dealing with, starting with the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone on down. Okay, who the true men of the Lord are. Okay, it says every because you want to talk about the fruits, man. You, you just look at the you look at the fruits of the apostles, man. Look at the works that they've put in all these years, never taking breaks. Okay, never giving to change. Okay, uh, pushing the doctrine wholeheartedly and 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 being on fire with it, man. Okay, that is a a, a good tree bringing forth good fruit. And we are the fruit of the apostles. Every single one of us that got taught by and learnt by the apostles, man, and still are being taught and fed by the apostles, we are the fruit of, of, of the apostles, man. Okay? And ultimately, when you want to go deeper, we're the fruit of, of you know, Yahweh Shai. You know, when you want to go deeper, all right? Because the scriptures say in um, John, the 15th chapter, um... And the first verse, it says, I am the true vine. These are the words of Yahweh Shai, man. Okay. These are the words of Yahweh Shai. He says, I am the true vine and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me, right? Every branch in me. Doesn't that prove that he is the true vine? All right. And the branches, what did the branches do? The branches bear fruit. Okay. It says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. Right? But every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it that it may bring forth more fruit. Okay? So, what you got to understand is, is that that word purgeth, when you go into that word purgeth now, alright, it means to um, to prune. Okay? And the Greek word is kathiro. Uh, alright, I believe I did a video on this... Um, on this subject before or similar similar to this subject before but i'm going to go into this nonetheless again for edification purposes all right dealing with the the, the pruning okay it says to cleanse right of filth and impurity all right it says to prune trees and vines from useless shoots okay from guilt to ex uh, expiate all right, and what's what's an example of a useless shoot? Someone that just ain't doing the work, or someone that's changing up the doctrine, or someone that's, you know, just causing confusion and strife within within this ministry, man. That's a useless shoot. Okay, because that's not you know you 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 know this food is that we're giving out through the spirit is supposed to be nutritional. All right, and if if the food is not nutritional yet, then what if it's bad fruit? Then what what good is it for you? How are you gonna grow from food that's not nutritional? Like GMO foods, just to make an example, all right? GMOs, man, GMO foods are not good for you. They're bad for you, bro. Now, on the outside, it looks like edible fruit. It's edible. You can eat it and whatever, pass it through your digestive system and all of that. But is it good for you? Are you getting the nutrition, the nutrients that you need from that fruit or that food? No, you're not, all right? And that's why we have to be very, very careful with the, uh, the food that we push out there that, you know, as we attempt to feed the flock and the lambs of Yahweh Shai, man. All right. And we do it free from, um, uh, uh, we do it in order that we may be free from our guilt too, man. All right. Because we're going to be held accountable for the things that we're doing. Every man shall receive what, you know, what they're about for their works, whether it be good or bad. The scriptures tell you that. All right. Now you got that word prune, right? I'm just going to go into this word prune. Okay, it says, um, right, pruning, define prune in gardening. Okay, it says the pruning, and why did I type in gardening? Because the scripture says that the most the father is the husbandman, 
And when you deal with husbandry, that's agriculture. All right? You, you, like a farmer. A farmer has to take care of that land. Okay? And ultimately, man, the Heavenly Father is watching over us, man. And he, you know, he, you know, everything comes from Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. The scripture says a man shall receive nothing except it come from, from, from heaven. Okay? So the Heavenly Father is the, is the true husband, man, through, yeah, it's through Yahweh. Yahweh Shai and then, then on down. All right? That's the order. It says pruning is the act of cutting to remove stems from trees, shrubs, and plants. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. It says pruning is defined according to the dictionary as trimming. It says a tree, shrub, or a bush by cutting away dead or overgrown branches or stems, especially to increase fruitfulness and growth. Okay. Because the Lord said that he's going to purge of that good fruit. All right. And that purging is going to come through by the pruning process. That purging is going to come through the pruning process. And like I said, I'll give you the example when the apostles always speak about the Lord, you know, bringing judgment. Because the scripture says that judgment must begin at the house of the Lord. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel? And when that judgment goes forth, that's when people are going to start realizing, oh shit, the real men of the Lord, that's where it's at. Look at it. When the spiritual power comes. Okay, that's when people are going to realize. Remember, the scripture said, then shall it be known that a prophet have been among them, man. Okay, so let's read from John 15 and 2 again. It says, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. But every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. All right? And that's the whole purpose. And that's, that's why the scripture says, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. That's that purging process. We're being pruned. Each and every one of us are being pruned, man. We're being purged, okay? And that's the trial of our faith. This is James chapter 1, verse 22. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. Yeah, because if you're just a hearer and you're not a doer, the scriptures speak about that he may run that readeth. This, 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 this truth is supposed to make you alive, man. All right? We're no longer in that dead state where we were just out there in that YOLO spirit, jumping around, sweating in a nightclub. With strobe lights on, man. You know? Come on, bro. Like, we, we've woken up to this truth. Now we're alive. And the scripture says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And I ain't talking about your physical belly. It's talking about your mind. You know, the seat of your, your, your thoughts, your conscience, your mind. When you go into that word belly, man. Okay, and that's why you see the you know the fruit starting with the apostles and the elders on down. That's why Apostle Gobar did that video like about you know um, all these videos that are coming out from GMS. You know, and and how many live streams there were at the same, at the same time. You shall know them by their fruit. All right, it says, "Be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. If any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass." Okay, so this is about being a, 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 a doer, man. Okay, not just a hearer of the word. Okay, all right, so I pray this was an edifying video, man. I don't know if I had any other scriptures, I believe there was one more. Um, was it Matthew 22? Is it? Uh, let me see. No, it might be. Let me type in if I type in fig tree. Um, so I can just bear with me. Um, right, let's see if Matthew 21. Yep, this is Matthew chapter 21, verse 18. This is now in the morning, right? As he returned into the city, he hungered. All right. It says, uh, the he being Yahweh Shai, it says, And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon. Okay, because a tree, um, in fact, let me keep reading before I explain it. It says, But the leaves only and said to and said unto it, Let no fruit grow, uh, grow on thee henceforward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. Okay, and when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Alright? And the reason why I brought this scripture out, man, is because guess what? A fig tree, a fig tree's use and purpose is to bring forth good fruit. You know, figs, it's a beautiful fruit, man. And when you, 
you know, if you've got a fig tree that's growing in your back garden, let's just say, for example, if it ain't bearing no fruit, then what good is the tree? What, what good is it there for? It's supposed to bear full fruit. Like any tree, you got a, a, an apple tree or an orange tree, a banana tree, whatever, that ain't bearing forth no fruit or bringing forth rotten fruit constantly, then it's supposed to be hewn down. Okay? And that's why the scripture says that about every uh, plant, what did the scripture say? Um, damn, where's that scripture? Shall be rooted. This is the one, Matthew chapter 15, verse 13. But he answered, but he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly father have not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch, man. All right, so if you're a plant the Heavenly Father have not planted, then guess what? You're just going to be rooted up out of this. And that's why it's important to keep a healthy fear of the Lord. We pray that Psalms 51, that the Lord doesn't take his Holy Spirit from us, man. That we ain't just a castaway. This, the Apostle Paul spoke about, let's not be a castaway, man. All right, so going back into the fig tree example, Matthew the 21st chapter and the 19th verse, what did Yahweh Shai say? When there was no, he was hungry. Okay, like, like, hey, the elect out there, they're hungry. The Lord gave us an order. He said, look, he, what did the Lord say, tell Peter? And Peter asked him three times. Peter, you know, the Lord asked Peter three times, Salaki. He said, do you love me? And Peter answered three times and said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And each time the Lord said, feed my lambs and feed my sheep. They're hungry. So we got to feed them, but not just feed them GMOs, feed them with this good food, man. All right. Go feed him with his good word, you know. <laughs> Inside joke, but hey, but it's the truth, you know. You got to feed him with this good word, you know, the, the true knowledge, man, the pure doctrine. Okay, it says, Let it said, um, let no fruit grow on thee henceforward for, forever, and presently the fig tree withered away. And that's why we don't want to be a castaway, man. All right, so, um. Yeah, I pray you were edified with this lesson. You know, I just wanted to do a quick video on that. And really what inspired me to do this was that um, was a video that was put up by Apostle Elder Gabar. You know, um, and I can't remember the title, but he was going into, um, you know, he was doing a, he was responding to a comment, I believe, about someone that had made about, you know, and the Apostle said that he doesn't have to, you know, basically, you know, about humility all right, we know how to, you know, we know humility. We don't need a lesson in humility or something. You know, something along, along that. I can't remember what the, I, didn't, I didn't get that far in the video to know what the comment was. But, you know, you could just imagine, guys, oh, yeah, you guys just, you know, you're tooting your horn on how much videos you're doing this and that. Well, you should know the tree by its fruits, man. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And I believe Elder Yasha Wamba put that scripture up in the comment board. Of the response of Apostle Gobar's video, John 7 38. He that believeth for me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. This is what inspired me to do this lesson, man, because you're going to know a tree by its fruits. You know, the works, man. Are they doing the work? And not just acting like they're doing the work, but are they doing it in sincerity? Because the scripture says, Cursed be he who doeth the work of the Most High deceitfully, man. You know? So, anyway, with that, you know. The purging continues, man, and we're being pruned. And this is a pruning process. And there's going to be a lot more purging to come. All right? But nonetheless, you know, that tree is going to bring forth more and more fruit. The Lord said it must be so. All right? And that's another thing. When you're catching hell and you're getting purged, hey, it makes you hate this place even more. And it makes you want to do even more work. It makes you want to curse this place out even more, bring out the truth even more. So the Lord, it's all about balance, man. All right? Because if you, if you won the lottery and you were just sitting back, you know, getting you, you know, getting your, uh, you, you know, your rod blown every day. You just sitting back, just chilling, you know, by and, and getting all these women around you like these rappers have. Then you wouldn't really be involved in the work. That's why you ain't gonna see guys like Denzel Washington holding post at camp because they're in the world, man. They're already, they've already received their consolation, man. But the pruning process, you know, it, it helps to bring forth more fruit, you know. Like the scripture said. So with that man, I pray you were edified to the next time I say Shalom.